Time to play some tennis. Tennis, tennis, tennis. Yes. Remember my bad day. What was my bad day? If you saw the video, somebody tried to break into my truck, tore up the ignition. I had to have it towed. I had to have all kinds of things done. It was a mess. And it ended up costing me $1,200 to have it fixed. But that day, as they towed it away, I had a choice. I could go in the house and pout and cry and do all that other stuff. Or I could hit the road and do what I do, which is thrift. And that's what I did. I put... Welcome everybody, Mike the Golden State Picker with another video for you today. Today is a good video. You got to watch this one. I had a fantastic basically day and a half of sales. You got to stick around. I found something very, very cool at the Goodwill. People say you can't find stuff at the Goodwill. Well, I got something that's got some potential. We're going to show you that. We're going to talk just about reselling. And we're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun. So this is a good video to stick around. If you're new, this will intrigue you or, you know, push you maybe to say, hey, this may be something I can do, okay? I like all my videos to be this way. But, hey, it is reselling. And basically, uh, I want to start off with just a quick little introduction here of stuff. You know, uh, hearing a lot out there, man, a lot of people saying they're struggling and struggling, and we, we talk about it sometimes, and I talk about it a lot, how you basically just have to keep going, right? You really do, and today is a classic example of that. That is this Today's video is a perfect example of how things can flip, you know, and then, you know, you get these peaks and these valleys in retail. We Basically, we are in the retail sector. That's how it was with me when I owned my furniture store. You know, you would have these peaks and then these valleys. And it was like you always tried to be even keeled. I mean, it was great if you could be, but it was very difficult because sometimes the season would come and then go. And, you know, and it ebbs and flows in your life. And then sometimes it just weighs on you. And then some people just can't handle it. And then they give up and they quit and they say, I just can't do it. When, you know, I constantly show you that cartoon of the guy, one guy pickaxing through the get, get to the diamonds and he turns around and he's this close to getting to the diamonds and the other guy's just wailing away. That's how it has to be. It has to be that way. You have to find the enthusiasm of what you do. Um, I'll be honest with you. When I was in retail, I had enthusiasm for about 20 of my 25 years at the particular retail location. I did five years of building furniture. So I was in the industry for 30 years. If you think about your job, think about how you've been at your job for 20 years, whatever it is. Is that enthusiasm still there? I don't know. Sometimes we lose it. Again, the peaks and the valleys, even at your job, right? So this is a fun thing this of all the things i've ever found this is the funnest it is just basically to me uh an adventure a treasure hunt every day a treasure hunt every day uh some days you come home with nothing right some days you go fishing don't get any fish next day you go fishing you catch all the fish you can get right so you just don't know it's it's just these ebbs and flows that we deal with and we have to keep fighting and all I can tell you guys is it's it's really rewarding. And if you can find stuff, and if you're in a location where you can find stuff, I know some of you I gotta be very careful here because I am in California, Silicon Valley. I have access to quite a bit of thrift stores, so I don't wanna over overstate myself, but <clears throat> there is a lot of potential out there everywhere. Your area has stuff I don't have, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So please hang in there, please keep fighting. Uh, try to figure out how to make it work, get that financial discipline so that five, ten years down the road, you still have that enthusiasm uh, like I do. I've, I've been doing it for four years. You've watched, if you've watched enough of my videos, you know, four years full time, having a blast doing it. Um, basically, I'm retired, but I'm not. I'm having just too much fun doing this. And that's where you got to try to get to. I think. You know, when you get a little bit older, and I know my, my sister-in-law hates me when I say that, but, I, you know, hey, I'm, I am 60, I'm climbing to the next level, 
and uh, I'm having a great time doing it. All right, guys, so there's enough of the introduction for you. Just uh, some, you know, it's exciting when you have a day like this, and it just shows, okay? It just shows. All right, now I'm going to tell you the amount that we have of stuff that we sold. We have 18 items, okay? And here's the total, $3,700. There are two items basically over $1,000, okay? Two items. We're going to show those, okay? They are very cool. Two totally different items. And we have one item that I'm going to show you that I found at Goodwill. And hopefully you have seen, I tried to do a, a video out, outside in the Goodwill and the Savers. I'm going to see, hopefully it will have been up by for this one. And this item is shown in that video, okay? So I'm going to show you, to show you it now. All right, it was in a Goodwill. And this is not a Goodwill that I go to a lot. If you heard me talk about myself, I do a route. This route, I broke off the opposite direction and said I'm gonna try something different because I wasn't finding a ton of stuff. Eh, but I thought, let's go give it a shot. Raining like crazy this day. I mean, dumping. It was one of those, um, they call them bomb cyclones here now. They come up with names of all these storms, right? And this is what I found. Okay, I'm gonna bring it back and show you. Hopefully you can see it. There you go. It's about 29 by 22. Very thick piece of wood painted and carved. It was very interesting. It was marked $9 and I think 59 cents. Very interesting piece. Uh, I had to move my cart and I was going to grab it. I was, and I should have just taken it. But a lady was looking close at it. I grabbed it and I said, I, I'm, I'm taking that. She, she understood she wasn't going to grab it. And there's another one. I'm going to show you it in a second. Now, I did some research, and I found out that this is potentially, I think it is, by an artist by the name of Stan Dan, D-A-N-N. -N. He's out of my area, local area. He was born in 1931. I'm going to put it up here. I don't know when he died. I can't remember when he died, but he's since passed. There is a website for him and an email, and I sent off some photos and hopefully I'll get some information back. I will show you a couple other things up here. What alerted to me that this was his. There was a poster of this particular thing on eBay, okay? And a, a poster sold for like $25. So I wasn't positive, so I'm not 100% sure here. But what he was, prior to his artwork, he was a commercial sign maker. And this fits up his alley. I'm going to try and show you this if I can turn it there, you can kind of see it, okay? So this is potentially by Stan Dan. I don't know. Um, you can see it's, it's thick, a very thick piece of wood. So like an outdoor sign. I've seen signs like this stuff, like in Carmel, various areas. And he also did different artwork. I think it was called BAS Relief Work, and it was done out of wood. So that so he evolved into that but this was his commercial work supposedly we will find out i'll show you the other one now so i'll drop this one and the other one is uh, i don't know if it's finished or not or not oh boy let's see how we flip it around here here we go we got the right way this one's about the same size okay nine dollars 59 cents and the same kind of relief carving okay very, very interesting if these are his, okay, <laughs> because they could potentially be worth valuable. I'm not saying super valuable, but again, uh, very interesting, okay? Everything fits. He's from the Bay Area. He's from Lafayette, which is up north of where I'm at, by up above San Francisco in that area. So it all fits. Now I just got to do a little bit more research and see potentially what they are worth. See, that's great. That's why you go out, right, guys? You never know. That's why, hey, if I didn't decide to switch to that one, maybe it would have been gone. So hopefully they are the real deal. We will find out. And when I do, I will let you know. Obviously, I'll let you know. All right, let's let's uh, let's get into the things that we sold, okay? We have 18, $3,700. Works out to a $205 average selling price. That's very skewed because of the two items. But I want to show you the bread and butter, and I want to show you the really big items that I sold too, okay? All right, let's start off right off with something very small. Got it right out of my bin of books. If you've watched some of my videos, you've seen what I'm talking about with a bin of books. 
You'll have to maybe I'll link to the description a video of one of those you can watch if you have if you don't know what that is. This is Tekken 3 PlayStation game. Okay shape. I figured I could get about 15 each across the board. I talked about these. Um, Tekken here sold for $12 plus I think $5 shipping. So uh, $12 and five. I'm trying to look on my list. I got so much stuff on my list. I, I, I should just go down, make it, and pick up each one, right? Uh, I'm not that smart. I'm not that smart. So uh, 12 bucks for that one. Also out of the bin of books a while back, not a while back, probably about uh, two weeks ago. This was quick. I, I Portfolio. These were in there. There were like about 10 of these. And I thought, you know, they got to have some value, right? Um, so I bundled them as a pair, two. You know, I had five, so two of them. And the portfolio, I sold a set of four for 38. I took an offer for 38 free shipping. Now this one was $21 free shipping. So right there, $60, okay, off of uh, six of them. And I still got another pair left. So this this could end up paying for one bin right here. Because what I pay? $100, right? So if I sell them all, five at $21 basically, there's a hundred dollars or you, you get what I'm talking about. You, you watch my channel long enough, simple portfolios like this. So yeah, uh, you know, look them up, compare them and then beat their price to get them out of there. Don't let them sit around, be underneath that price and accept the money you're going to make. If you're going to net 12, $13, it, boom, get it out. Just get it out of there. That's my thinking on a lot of that stuff on the bin of books. I'll get as much as I can on the really good stuff. And on the other stuff, it's gone. I want to just make money and move on. Now, this one is cool. This is Arctic Fox right here. This is from uh, Electronic Arts. And I, is this an Apple one? App, remember, I got this whole lot of Apple. Yeah, this is Apple again. Arctic Fox floppy. Five and a quarter floppies. This is Arctic Fox. I got a huge lot of Apple games, and I have been selling them like you know crazy. I mean, I've made so much money. I paid 150 or 175 dollars for it, and uh, this one sold for 25 plus seven dollars shipping. Uh, I have sold some for 200, one for 300, I think. So I sold quite a bit. That's again, we talk about trying to buy somebody's lot, and that's how you you really build consistent sales, stuff like that. So keep plugging away. Keep looking for lots. Get what? I don't have my business card here. You got to have a business card, guys. Have it and pass it out. You'll be amazed. Network. That was a networking find. A friend of mine said, hey, this guy's got games. Go over and take a look. I literally spent three or four hours in this guy's backyard side area picking every game I wanted. I had so much fun and I was like, I'll take that one, that one, that one, making sure they were complete. And then we caught a deal. So again, yeah, we talk about it, networking over and over. One of my favorite categories, right? I talk about it all the time, media. I'm an album collector. I got a back in that bin back there. You can't see it, but there's another uh, huge stack of records. I just keep them. I collect them. Yeah, those I'm going to hold on to. And when I get older, and I can't get out and thrift as much, I'll start peeling off more of those. I'll sell $20 here, $20 there. You get what I'm, you kind of get what I'm going at here. This is Keel, a metal uh, band. Well, I should say hair metal band. We all look at, look at those poses, right, guys? Look at those hairdos, right? Every band had a Motley crew. All of them had it. Keel sold for $20 plus $6 shipping. I love the hair metal. I, I, you look at me and I, I drive around and I listen to, I'll, I'll ask uh, Siri, hey, play the 70s. Hey, Siri, play the 60s. Hey, Siri, play hair metal. Hey, hey Siri, play metal. I play everything. Sometimes I'm in a mood, I want to hear big band. So I, I like to have a variety in my uh, musical taste. Just depends on my mood, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, and I'm in the mountains, I want to hear, you know, I want to hear driving music when I'm in the mountains or on the beach. I want to hear stuff that's cool sounding. Uh, that's, that's how I roll when I go along the beach. I want to hear stuff that when I, if I had a convertible and it was down, people would be going, yeah, that's a cool song, right? All right, let's get back to what we sold. Here we go. Um, I'm going to save that one. I'll put the big ones in sooner or later. You're going to have to stick around. This is cool because I got this one from a garage sale a while ago. 
and there was a whole lot of train stuff. I got some train books, and then I got these. Now, these are pictorials, and this is Southern Pacific, and it's a specific class and a specific line, all that could be and by Jeff Ainsworth. He did a lot of these. This one's brand new. Most of them were brand new. The original price was $27.50 and $22.99 on sale back in whenever they were selling these. But um, I've been selling them between $34 and $39 consistently. This one sold for $34 plus I think I got $5 shipping, $5 shipping, I think. Trains, yeah, stuff like that. That was a very, I, I didn't pay much more than 50 bucks as I remember for the whole thing. And I had a huge lot. I just counted, I have six left. And at the time, I think I had 32 or 36 of those. So again, another lot type situation, right? All right, bin of books, back to the bin of books. Um, this one is in Yusha. I cannot say it, guys, sorry. Manga set, this is one through 11. Now I happened to, it was weird was, I happened to get some of these out of the bin and they were mixed numbers. And then I thought, you know, I think I have some of those up for sale. And what I ended up doing was going to look, and I did. And I took those and these and made one set of 11. And then the other set was a mixed set, which wasn't complete, you know, not in order. So this set sold for $50 plus $10 shipping. And I also sold the other set, which was a little bit bigger, I think, um, but it sold for about the same. So right here, another $100, basically, 50 here and the other 50. So you can see how manga is extremely hot. Anime, manga, all that stuff is really red hot. Um, I love finding that. And this is the kind of stuff, I'm telling you, at garage sales, you'll see this. People wanting to clear out maybe some older manga. Let's stick with, um, let's stick with the, the bit of books. Just got this the other day. This is called the uh, Amtrak Wars uh, by Patrick Tilly. Uh, got all six, so I said, hey, it's a lot. Let's take it. Let's see what we can do with it. I got 21, I got $19. I had it up for 21. I took an offer, $19 plus $9 shipping. Probably gonna make a couple bucks on the shipping. I think I'm a little bit high, media mail. But again, I'm not gonna sit on this. I'm gonna make at least a fifth of the bin. Keep this stuff moving, keep it moving. That's the complete thinking you have to have. You have to have this thinking continually going on. Um, all right, let's go back. Keep staying with the bin of books. I got some cool stuff coming, guys. I had a cu couple cool ones here. Ooh, yeah. Here we go. This one, the NIV Thin Line Bible. Where'd I get it? The bin of books. Large print. Brand new. Brand new in the box. Uh, again, you're not going to get a ton off of this one, uh, but you're still going to sell it. And I sold it for $20 plus $6 shipping. All this stuff, and I got one Bible. You say sell more, but nope, I only got one Bible on this this run. Uh, people ask, what are the what's the most things you what's the, the the genre you find in a bin? It's either usually textbooks, self help, and Bibles. Bibles, you'll run into streaks like little veins of Bibles where you'll find five or six all together because they're throwing out their Bibles. I mean, it's kind of sad, but the family goes, oh, somebody passed away. They have five or six Bibles and they go to the donation. So, you know, that's why you see a lot of Bibles. And I have a lot up for sale and I sell a lot of them. And let's go to a cool item. Yesterday, I might have made a mistake on this one, okay? So this one, I might have made a mistake. Uh, savers. Walked into Savers after I did some garage sailing. Nothing great at the garage sales. Mm, you know, eh. Boom. Here we go. I see this. And it, it, with my discount, I paid $10. It's a mouse. Corsair Vengeance M95. New in, new in the box. I opened it to make sure because sometimes they'll put these things back. But if you look on the back, you kind of can tell if the mouse pad was worn. Still, this sold right away. Sold for $170 right off the bat. I'm thinking I left some meat on the bone here, okay? Uh, you know, I'm not a big auction person. This probably should have been maybe started at that and see if somebody would push it up higher or even started my price higher, okay? But I was trying to figure this one out and that's the best I could come up with and it sold. Hey, I'm not gonna look back and say I shoulda, shoulda, coulda, woulda. I turned $10 into $170, $170, 
Cannot complain about that, guys. Cannot. Really. Hey, some of these older electronic mount, how do you call them? Mice? Mouse? <laughs> for computers? Uh, they can go for a lot of money. So keep your eye out for them. And you can pick them up for a buck or two. A lot of those Logitech ones, some of those can go for some really good money. I have found this game many times now. Now, originally when I first started out, my goal was to find this game. When I first started out re reselling, I wanted to find this game. And I, if you remember, I was an Uber driver. And I would drive up and down to San Francisco to San Jose. And there was this little um, um, thrift store in a church, a church in San Mateo. I remember it, and I had yet to find a cash flow. I walk into the church, look in their basement. It was down in their basement, and I'm looking around, and I found a cash flow. I'm like, you're kidding. Of all places, this is where I'm going to find my first cash flow game. I paid $5, I remember, and at that time, they had a little bit more value. I think I sold it for about 70 used. You find them new, you're obviously going to get more money. The value has dropped a little bit, but this is cash flow. This is a newer version, a third edition, very good shape. Came out of Savers. $2.49 is what I paid. $2.49. And cash flow sold for $33 plus $16. It's in this range of 33 to 37, generally speaking, for this. But I only paid 249 minus 20 percent, so like two bucks. Okay, so keep your eye out for cash flow. That is Robert Kurosaki, rich dad, poor dad. If you're not familiar with who that, uh, why that game is so popular, he has a cash flow series of books. He has podcasts. He has a lot of different things out there. He's been around a while. Robert Kurosaki. Oh. All right, let me take a quick drink here, and uh, we're going to get to the big items now. I think we're uh, pretty much running out. All right, let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at some music CDs. I'm going to show you. Uh, I did sell. Uh, I have a, a buyer who's really close to me, and he's been buying a lot of my CD lots, and and he's making me offers and stuff. And some of them, like this one here, uh, is a R and B uh, soul lot of fifty. There, this is just one uh, package. Usually, I lot these up and box them, pre-box them. But I bought a really old oak filing cabinet, very cool, very deep, and I put these in there. And then I just wrote like lot uh, lot eight R and B blues, and then I put it in the ad. So uh, I just got to go over there and grab them. One of the lots, though, is not here. At my father-in-law's house, I do have, he has an older metal shed that has a few things I keep in there and some of these box lots. So I think the other box is over there, but I'll flash it up here to show you. One was a 95 CD indie rock set, $65 plus $24 media mail. And then the 50 R&B soul CD set for, I, I took $25. Just one of the movements. So there was $90. Um, if you know, I buy these, uh, I'll try to buy these in big lots. Like uh, this was bought from the flea market and I paid, I think I paid $300 for like another 1600 CDs. And then I had to go and lot them up into various lots. So I had a rock and roll one that I sold, made good money on another uh, one like metal. And then these independent stuff like this, you have to kind of lot up and basically move them uh, however you can. You don't want to sit on them too long, but sometimes that happens. But I have a nice storage spot for them. It doesn't take up a lot of room. All right. Time to play some tennis. Tennis, tennis, tennis. Yes. Remember my bad day. What was my bad day? If you saw the video, somebody tried to break into my truck, tore up the ignition, I had to have it towed. I had to have all kinds of things done. It was a mess. And it ended up costing me $1,200 to have it fixed. But that day, as they towed it away, I had a choice. I could go in the house and pout and cry and do all that other stuff. Or I could hit the road and do what I do, which is thrift. And that's what I did. I put, uh, I put that day in God's hands. I said, God, I'm going to go out and I'm going to have a good day. I'm not going to let it destroy me. And I ran into five tennis rackets, if you saw me talk about that in that video. This is the fourth one to sell. I paid $31 for five tennis rackets. This is Wilson, a Roger Federer series. 
and this particular one sold for $95, uh, no, $99, $100 plus $17 shipping. So I turn a negative into a positive, the best you can, just like I'm talking about the valleys, right? Ups and downs. Happens to us all, okay? Uh, I have had my store broken into. I've had my store's windows broken into. And after a while, they won't cover you for glass if you have several break-ins. And around California sometimes, you have homeless people that will you know, hang out in shopping centers. Uh, they get a little bit too uh, tipsy, as we say, or whatever. And I remember one night getting a phone call from the deputy sheriffs. They almost knew me by name. Mike. Well, they do. They say they have the information in their computer system. They said, hey, you got to come down. Somebody broke one of your windows. It's never, you know, at 7 o'clock at night. It's always 3 a.m., 2 a.m. So that's an up and a down. You know, those things happen. It sucks. It does suck. But I made the best of that day. And I made over $400 so far with one racket to go. So my goal was about 500 and I'm going to make about 500 So can't complain about that at all. Ah, time to get into a couple other items. We've got one. Well, it's time to get into the golf portion of our video now. We have tennis. And now let's get into the golf portion. You know I love golf. Golf's pick it up. Yes, spring is coming. It's not coming fast enough for me, though. Here you go. Ping, Mac Daddy. Oh, no, this is a Callaway. This is the Callaway. It is a Mac Daddy. It's a Callaway wedge. And the Callaway wedge sold for $40 plus $14 shipping. You remember I bought a big lot of golf clubs, like five bags. I made all kinds of money off that. And I still have, a, still have clubs to put up. And I got that at Savers. And I can't remember if I paid like $125. Bucks. They just bundled They want them all gone. I said, Mike, if you take them all from here, we'll sell them to you for $125. There's 40 of it right there, $40. Nice, nice pitching wedge. Hey, now I got this one from another picker friend of mine, and he sold me a bunch of stuff, and inside there was this, just the shaft. Where'd the head go? Where'd the head go? Well, I know what this is. Somebody inside, there was a driver, and he had swapped this shaft and put another shaft in it. You heard me talk about golf clubs here. Golf clubs are... Just like a lot of other areas, there's a lot of variation from flex, which is stiff, regular, uh, senior, women's, extra stiff, all kinds of stuff. And it sounds daunting. It's not. The information is pretty much here. It's on the shaft. It's going to tell you everything you need to know about it. This is a Speeder 57 stiff flex, and it's the evolution. Okay, that's the evolution. Now, what will confuse you is... <laughs> This kind of stuff. This is what we call the tip. And this is the tip to a tater made. Okay. I'm trying to see if I can see anything else on here that I could point out for you. This is the, so you've got to know that. They will ask you, is the tip there? And that's the tip. And that addressed, if you take a look, take a look at that. Loft, lower, standard, lower, standard, um, higher. It's crazy. It's crazy what you can do. You can adjust the golf club before the round. You can't adjust it during the round, okay? But once you set it, you know, what's, what's Ron Peel, Paul Peel say? Set it and forget it. Same thing on the golf course. If you're gonna put a different setting on your driver at the first tee, set it and forget it because you can't change it on hole three or hole four. But shafts can sell for some money. This shaft sold for, I think it was $44, well, $44 and some $14 shipping, I think is what it is. I'm close. I don't know why I'm not seeing it. Oh, there it is. 44 plus 15. 15 on the shipping. All right. Now let's get into uh, uh, the big ones. We got to get into the big ones. We, You know, I saved them to the end. Uh, let's start off with the the one that didn't get me the most money. <laughs> it is golf clubs. Boom. Ping. G25 irons. Um, what is it? Is it a four? It's four through the U wedge, so it's a really clean set. Really clean set. I paid up for it. I paid a hundred dollars for the set. Okay. Now, uh, I was a little off on my original listing. I got it up there a little high at first. That's okay. I'd rather be high and then come back down. Um, I had them up for about five hundred dollars. There wasn't much action. This one guy was really persistent. 
So he came in with an offer at 370. And I said to myself, Mike, let's go back in and let's start looking to see what's going on here. Because sometimes your listing gets stale and you're going, what's going on? And I went in and looked and they were all starting to sell between 370 and 400 in that range in general. So I said to myself, Mike, this is where you got to, you know, be honest with yourself. I think I'm a little high here. So what do we do? We paid 100. We're going to make some good money. Let's just sell them. So I did. I took the offer. They sold for $370 plus $27 shipping. So another really, really cool find. Okay. All right. Now, uh, the next set. You wouldn't think this because if you're a golfer, you just, you just, you, sometimes, just like anything, this one, you go, wow, okay, they have that much? Okay. Yep, they are. And it's a whole lot here. These are ladies' pings, okay? And I'm going to try and just pull one out here, give you the idea. It's the GLE series. The GLE series. And they're in fair shape to good shape. They're not in great shape. The woods are in, in good shape. Three of the woods have head covers. One does not, okay? Now, bought this off of another picker in uh, $250. Bucks. Yeah, I paid $250, okay? Okay. You're going, wow, Mike, you paid a lot for that set. Well, but it, now it, wasn't, it wasn't, you put them down, they're going to fall all over the place. It wasn't a gamble, okay? There was value here. It's just what was I going to end up getting this, to selling them for? So I stuck it up for $1,000. $1,000 for a used set of women's clubs. And it ended up selling for $950 plus $30 shipping. So there you go, right? Nice, nice find. Uh, if you have, I think, the GLE2s, then that's a solid $1,200 probably. Easy. I don't know why. I really didn't look up. I know the Ping brand, but for some reason, this is, uh, for ladies, is really, really popular. So 950 bucks there. All right. Let's get into the big one. The big one. I don't have it. Here, phys I have it here physically on my, my property, but it's just way too big. So I'm going to show you what it is. I'm going to show you a couple of photos of what it is. Went to a garage sale last weekend, and this is what I found. It is a lift, portable lift for moving people into the bed and so forth. And it was on the ground at the garage sale, and I, I said, how much? She said, 300 I said, how hey, about 250 All in the canvas bag that you can pull around. I said, I'll take it. Took it home, put it up, did the research. I knew that it was worth what I thought it was. It sold for, you're going to see up here, it sold for $1,700 plus $300 shipping and $300 shipping. So $2,000 total. And uh, I was praying, I'm going, please, 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 where's it going to? This? And it just happened this morning. So I'm looking and I tap it, California. California shipping. How am I going to ship it? I might make a video on that. I might show you how I do it. I uh, There's two ways. I, I, there's a, uh, I think it's called Roadie or something from UPS. I'm going to look into that because it's kind of a up and back LA to San Jose. That might work. Or I just might get some really big heavy cardboard boxes from a local supplier. Box that thing up. It only, it looks like it weighs a ton. It weighs 75 pounds. So I'm well with under the weight limit for shipping with UPS. It is interstate. That's what's great. So um, I'm fine on the shipping. I, it's not going to Florida. But anyhow, uh, I'll let you know what it ended up costing me. And maybe I'll make a quick video of how I boxed it or something if I have a chance to do that. That's it. So $1,700 on that one. That's how you do it, guys. That's how you have a good day. $3,700 in a day and a half. There it is. A lot of fun. You see how much fun it is. You can see the variety that I find. Now you go out, find, or tell me the finds that you have found. Put it down in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. You know, if you need some questions answered, comments, email, I'm going to be there to try to help you out. All right, guys. So there you go. Uh, a good video. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Many thanks to everybody. Hit that like, hit the subscribe, hit the bell, hit everything if you want to see more videos like this. And I will see you in the next video.